Protein bread that actually has a true taste, texture, and flavor of real bread is nowhere to be found. Not in a store, not on the internet, and most certainly not in my kitchen. After many, many attempts, I finally got a protein bread that achieves everything I have been looking for and more. Let's get into it. In order to bypass the need for kneading, an auto lease is what I'll be doing with this dough. Essentially, while the flour and water sit, the ingredients will do all the work for us. Grab a large bowl and into it add 220 grams of King Arthur bread flour, 110 grams of idle wheat gluten, and 15 grams dough conditioner. It is important to whisk those ingredients together very thoroughly so the dough conditioner gets evenly distributed. Hey Nick, what are dough conditioners anyway, and what do they do? Dough conditioners are typically a group of ingredients that work together to help speed up the proofing process, strengthen the gluten network in the dough, and help prevent both staling and molding. It is basically like taking your bread and giving it steroids. In a dough recipe like this one, the conditioners make a big difference. Just look at the test recipe right before I started using dough conditioners compared to the one right after. Yeah night and day. I will link the one I am using in the description below if you are interested in using it yourself. Grab 2% milk, pour 270 grams of it into a measuring cup, and put it in the microwave for 30 to 45 seconds or until it reaches about 90 degrees. By the way, I am using high protein milk to get the highest protein possible in this bread, but regular milk will work as well. Add the milk to the bowl and using a nice, thick spoon, mix the ingredients together until the milk is dissolved. It should look something like this. Add 15 grams white vinegar to the dough. Wait, why are we using vinegar in bread? Surprisingly, vinegar is a common ingredient in store-bought bread. Similar to dough conditioner, vinegar helps strengthen the gluten, helps make the crumb or the middle of the bread light and fluffy, and slows the molding process. Just look at the fluffiness of the test recipe after I started using vinegar. Now that our vinegar is added, soak your hand under water and start mixing the dough with your wet hand. Once all the dough is hydrated, add salt over the top and cover for 15 minutes. While the dough is chilling, let's prep the yeast. Using the measuring cup that the milk was in, weigh out 30 grams of water and 10 grams of yeast. Grab a spoon and mix the yeast around until all the little granules are soaking wet. Now let it sit until the timer goes off. Uncover your dough and as you can see, the salt has basically dissolved and the yeast is fully hydrated. We want to make sure we get all that yeasty goodness into our dough, so I would recommend using a rubber spatula and pouring it over the top. Initiate Operation Forearm Pump. Time to complete the mission three to four minutes. Using your strong hand, start squeezing the dough. I think of the dough as Play-Doh and I try to compress it as much as possible with each and every squeeze. To get a good idea of what I mean, my fingers literally rip through the dough for four minutes straight. I continue this process while occasionally flipping it around and then start squeezing again. You will be able to tell it's finished when the extra liquid is completely gone and everything looks unified. If it looks like a shaggy mess similar to this, you are in the right place, and now it is time to cover again for 30 minutes. 30 minutes later, our dough has put on some size, but is still a mess. This is where we do a simple stretch and fold to expand and tighten the gluten network. Get both of your hands wet so the dough doesn't stick to you, and take one side of the dough, stretch it as far as you can, and lay it across itself. Turn the bowl 90 degrees and do it again three to four more times until all the dough has been stretched. Flip the dough, slide your hand underneath it, and pull in a circular motion towards yourself. Repeat this process until you get a nice tight ball that looks fairly smooth like this. Cover again for 30 minutes. Imagine having all of my delicious recipes at your fingertips anytime, anywhere, with exclusive access to new recipes before anyone else sound enticing? Then I suggest you check out my cookbook. With over 100 mouthwatering recipes, my cookbook is the ultimate gift that keeps on giving, constantly updated with every new recipe I release on YouTube. If you pre-order now, you can use code E4CM20 for 20% off as a limited time discount. 30 minutes later, the dough is ready for its last stretch and fold. We are going to repeat exactly what we just did half an hour ago. Stretch and turn until the entire dough has been stretched. Flip it over again and round the dough into a nice taut ball. By effortlessly stretching the dough a few times, it is now smooth as butter and looks like it has been kneaded. 
This is the beauty of an auto lease. Cover the dough for 30 minutes, and when you return, it should look like this. Grab the dough out of the bowl and let it hang. The goal is to get the dough about five to six inches wide so it will fit in our loaf pan. If the dough is too wide, it won't fit correctly, which means it won't rise like it should. This happened to one of my test loaves, but it still tasted delicious, so don't worry if this happens to you the first time you try it. Lay the dough down in front of you with the bottom of the dough facing up. This is very important so you're your final product looks smooth and aesthetic. If the dough didn't stretch enough by letting it hang, then we will use its stickiness to our advantage. We can easily get the dough five to six inches wide by stretching it and letting it stick to the work surface. Then take the top of your dough and fold it over like this. Using the tips of your fingers, push the end of the dough into the crease similar to the way I am. We'll keep slowly rolling the dough down towards yourself, pressing the seams together with each roll. While doing so, make sure you are popping any large bubbles along the way. I also like to seal the ends of the dough as I'm rolling it and I am making sure it isn't getting too wide for my bread pan. If it is, I push the ends in a bit before I continue rolling. Seal the roll by pinching along the edge of the dough as well as each side of the roll. Grab a loaf pan and lightly spray it with oil. I can already hear you asking if the kind of loaf pan matters, and yes. It does. I would make sure you have a steel loaf pan and not a silicone one. Silicone ones work, but they spill out the sides after proofing and baking. They also don't create that nice edge and rounded top like a store-bought loaf of bread has. My loaf pan is 8.5 by 4.5 inches, but a 9 by 5 inch pan will work as well. If you buy a good one, you will have it forever. I will link a loaf pan in the description below if you need to purchase one. Put the dough inside of the loaf pan with the sealed side down and make sure the dough is touching each side of the pan and is placed directly in the middle of the pan. This will help with an even rise. Put your loaf somewhere warm, in my kitchen, that's the inside of the microwave, and let it rise for an hour. 15 minutes before that hour is up, preheat your oven to 350 degrees. Now before we throw it in the oven, can we just appreciate how beautiful this is? It rose perfectly and is ready to get baked, but we want to pop any big bubbles like this because we don't want huge pockets of air or holes in the bread. Throw the bread into a 350 degree oven for 25 to 30 minutes and let science work its magic. 30 minutes later, the dough is transformed into bread and literally looks like we just bought it from the bakery. This is the point where we have to exercise patience because the bread needs to completely cool before cutting into it, which takes a few hours. To let it cool, all we have to do is remove it from the loaf pan and put it on a wire rack. The browning on the bread looks perfect top to bottom, and with higher temperatures like 375 or 400 degrees, I was getting browning that was too dark in my opinion. If you like the top of your bread to have a more nutty color, I would recommend trying to bake at 375 degrees for 20 to 25 minutes. When the bread is ready to slice, don't try and cut into it with a chef's knife because you will squish your bread and we worked so, so hard for a fluffy and soft bread. A small serrated knife isn't a good option either because I tried it and I kept cutting uneven slices since the blade wasn't long enough. I decided enough was enough and I invested in a large serrated knife that is offset so your knuckles aren't hitting the cutting board at the bottom of each piece causing uneven slices. If you are going to regularly make protein bread, this is a necessity and only costed me about $30. Now, there's a proper way to cut into a loaf and that is to cut in the center. That might sound counterintuitive, but if you cut Cut slices from the center. When you are finished, you can close the bread by putting the two halves back together, which keeps the inside of the bread from getting rock hard and going stale. Then, to store, you can either wrap it in cling wrap, use an old bread bag you may have, or buy a set of bread bags separately. I ended up buying bread bags because wrapping it in cling wrap was honestly getting pretty annoying when unwrapping and rewrapping multiple times per day. Based on my experience, once baked, your loaf will last close to a week. It is important that you store the wrapped bread in a dry and dark place to also help prevent molding. Can we just take a moment to appreciate the crumb, which is a fancy name for the inside of this bread? It's soft, flavorful, and works perfectly for a classic peanut butter and jelly sandwich or a hot and melty grilled cheese. To be fair, I wouldn't make a meatball sandwich or a Philly cheesesteak with this protein bread because one, it would just fall apart, and two, I have a protein baguette recipe that would work seamlessly for either of them. Check out my protein baguette recipe here where I not only show you how to make them, but store them for months where they are just as good as when they were first baked. Until next time, deuces.